Today, we are going to discuss the skill-related physical fitness. Skill-related fitness are activities that focus on improving the skill of a person related to sports. It refers to the quality of one's movement skill. It is also termed as performance-related fitness because of its relationship to the efficiency and effectively of one's performance of different movements performed in different physical activities. There are six components in skill-related fitness. Balance, speed, reaction time, power, coordination, and agility. All of these components are already present within us. It's just that each individual has a different level of fitness from one another. Enhancements activities are suggested for them to maintain if not improve their present level of fitness. Individuals with low level of fitness need to determine their weaknesses and do some activities which may help elevate their fitness while those with a high level of fitness need not take for granted their conditions. Skill-related fitness or exercises helps to develop and enhance our agility, balance, coordination, power, reaction time, and speed. So what exactly are the six components of skill-related fitness? They are agility, balance, coordination, power, reaction time, and speed. Agility, put in simple terms, is simply this, being able to change directions quickly. A lot of our favorite sports and activities use agility, things like basketball, football, soccer, and martial arts. Balance is the ability to keep our body stable. Balance is critical in all areas of fitness and athletics. Without balance, our body movements wouldn't flow and look smooth. Coordination is the ability to move accurately and smoothly. Power is the combination of speed and strength. When I think of power, I think of power lifts like in the Olympics, like the clean and jerk. But I also think of activities like swinging a baseball bat because of the rotation in your hips. And as the same is true for the golf swing. In swimming, reaction time is the ability to respond to an external stimulus. Speed is exactly what you think it is. It's how fast you can move, or it could be how fast of the implement you are using can move. Now, let's discuss the different skill-related physical fitness tests or activities. Speed. It is the ability to perform a movement in a one direction in the shortest period of time. The purpose of different activities is to measure the running speed. Example activities to improve or enhance your speed are 40-meter sprint, butt kicks, and high knees. Speed is the ability of a person to cover a distance in a short period of time. We need this in sports like running, basketball, and many more. To test speed, we need to do 40-meter run. To do this, we need a running area with a measurement of 40 meters and a stopwatch. To do 40 meter sprint, first you need to have a running area with a measurement of 40 meters. It should also have a starting line and a finish line. At the signal ready, the performer should be at the starting line, assume a crouch position, and both hands should not go beyond the line. At the signal get set, the performer's hip move upward by extending the legs. And at the signal go, run to the finish line as fast as you can.
For the facilitator, first check if the stopwatch is at zero point. Then check if the performer is ready to run. Announce the signal, ready, get set, go. At the signal go, start the time and stop it as the performer cross the finish line. After the run, record the time. This is the scoring for speed. Stand erect. Create a loose fist and pump your arms as if you're going on a jog. Let your forearms graze right by your sides like slots in a toaster. Kick your heels up to touch or nearly touch your bum. These have been butt kicks. For high knees, place your hands at hip height. Bring your thighs up to touch your hands as if jogging through hot lava. Keep your upper body erect and avoid rounding your back. Power. It is the ability of the muscle to transfer energy and release maximum force at a fast rate. The purpose of activities to develop your power is to measure the explosive strength and power of the leg muscles. Example activities are standing long jump and sideward jump squats. Power is the ability of the muscle to transfer energy and release maximum force at a fast rate. The next test is standing long jump. Purpose to measure the explosive strength and power of the leg muscles. Equipment, tape measure or meter stick or any measuring device. Procedure for the tester. A. Stand behind the takeoff line with feet parallel to each other. The tips of the shoes should not go beyond the line. B. Bend knees and swing arms backward once, then swing arms forward as you jump landing on both feet. Try to jump as far as you can. C. Do not control the momentum of the jump. Continuously move forward. Must land on both feet. E. Perform the test twice in succession. Procedure for the partner. A. Place zero point of the tape measure at the takeoff line. B. After the jump, spot the mark where the back of the heel of either feet of the tester has landed nearest to the takeoff line. C. Record the distance of the two trials. Scoring. Record the best distance in meters to the nearest 0.1 centimeters. Agility. It is the ability to move in different directions quickly using a combination of balance, coordination, speed, strength, and endurance. Purpose is to measure the ability of the body to move in different directions quickly. Example activities to improve or develop our agility are hexagon agility test and karaoke drill. Agility is the ability of a person to move quickly in different directions. We need this in sports like basketball, football, boxing, and many more. To test agility, we need to do two activities. 
hexagon agility test and shutter run. Hexagon agility test. The purpose of this test is to measure on how fast you can move in different direction using coordination, speed, and balance. For this activity, we need a hexagon mark on the floor and a stopwatch. The hexagon size. The length of each side is 18 inches for high school and 12 inches for elementary. Each angle is 120 degrees. There are different ways on how you can make a hexagon. I'm going to show you one way on how to do it. First, get a paper and cut it into strips. Each strip has a length of 18 inches for high school and 12 inches for elementary. After you cut the strips, lay it down on the floor and make a hexagon shape. Six sides. After you assemble it, put tape on each end of the strip of paper. To do hexagon agility test, first, stand with both feet together inside the hexagon facing the mark starting side. At the signal go, using the ball of the feet with arms bent in front, jump clockwise over the line then back over the same line inside the hexagon. After that, you rest for one minute. You need to repeat the test again, but now moving counterclockwise. For the timekeeper, start the time at the signal go and stop once the performer reached the side where she started. Record the time of each revolution. Restart the test if the performer jumps on the wrong side or step on the line. This is the scoring for hexagon test. Reaction time. It is the amount of time it takes to respond to a different stimulus. Purpose, to measure the time to respond to a stimulus. Example activities that can improve and develop our reaction time are stick drop test and throw and catch against the wall. Reaction time. This is the amount of time it takes to respond to a stimulus. Next step is stick drop test. Purpose to measure the time to respond to a stimulus. Equipment, 12-inch ruler or stick, and armchair or table and chair. Procedure for the tester, A, sit on an armchair or chair next to the table so that the elbow and the lower arm rests on the desk or table comfortably. B, Place the heel of the hand on the desk or table so that only the fingers and thumb extend beyond. Fingers and thumb should at least be one inch apart. C. Catch the ruler or stick with the thumb and index finger without lifting the elbow from the desk or table as the partner drops the stick. Hold the stick while the partner reads the measurement. D. Do this thrice. Procedure for the partner. A. Hold the ruler or stick at the top, allowing it to dangle between the thumb and fingers of the performer. B. Hold the ruler or stick so that the 12-inch mark is even between the thumb and the index finger. No part of the hand of the performer should touch the ruler or stick. C. Drop the ruler or stick without warning and let the tester catch it with his or her thumb and index finger. D. Record the score on the 
upper part of the thumb. Scoring, record the middle of the three scores. For example, if the scores are 21, 18, and 19, the middle score is 19. In case where the two scores are the same, for example, 18, 18, 25, the repeated score shall be recorded. Coordination. It is the ability to use the senses with the body parts to perform motor tasks smoothly and accurately. The purpose is to measure the coordination of the eye and hand. Example activities to develop and improve our coordination are juggling and one leg hop. Coordination. It is the ability to use the senses with the body parts to perform motor tasks smoothly and accurately. The next test is juggling. Purpose, to measure the coordination of the eye and hand. Equipment, SIPA, washer weighing four grams with five inches straw or 20 pieces bundled rubber bands, any similar local materials weighing four grams. Procedure for the tester, hit the SIPA or rubber band or the similar local material alternately with the right and left palm upward. The height of the material being tossed should be at least above the head. Procedure for the partner, A. Count how many times the performer has hit the material with the right and left hand. B. Stop the test if the material drops or after two minutes. C. There shall be three trials. Scoring, record the highest number of hits the performer has done. Balance. It is the maintenance of equilibrium while stationary or while moving. Purpose is to assess one's ability to maintain equilibrium. Example activities to improve and enhance our balance are historic balance stand test and side planking. Balance is the ability of a person to maintain body equilibrium while moving or playing. We need this in sports like gymnastics, figure ice skating, and skateboarding. To test balance, we need to do stark balance stand test. Stark balance stand test. The purpose of this test is to measure the ability of a person to maintain body equilibrium. To do this, we need a flat, non-slip surface and a stopwatch. To do historic balance stand test, first, the performer need to remove the shoes. Stand straight and place hands on the hips. Position the right foot on the side of the left knee. Raise the left heel to balance on the ball of the foot. Maintain balance as long as possible. Do the same procedure with the opposite foot. For the partner or facilitator, Start the time as the heel of the performer is raised off the floor. Stop the time if any of the following occurs. The hand come off the hips. 
The supporting foot swivel or move in any direction. The non-supporting foot lose contact with the knee. The heel of the supporting foot touches the floor. There shall be three trials. Scoring. Record the time taken on both feet in nearest seconds and divide the score to two to get the average percentage score. The following slides discuss the safety and measures before doing the physical fitness test. Before doing any kind of physical activity or physical fitness test, observe the following. The testing area should be free from any obstructions. Students with certain illness or not in good health condition are not advised to take the test. Avoid heavy meals before taking the test. Should have a proper warm-up exercises before taking the test. You should also wear proper PE or sports attire. Remove any body accessories to prevent injury. Take the resting pulse rate before the test starts. It should be less than 120 beats per minute. The test that requires cardiovascular endurance and other tests that involve same group of muscles should not be taken in succession.